The majority of my patients come to me with suboptimal vitamin D deficiency. Yes, the sun is important, but that is not the main reason you are deficient. There are six conditions that cause vitamin D deficiency, and I am giving them to you today. Hey there, beautiful person. This is Lindy Ford, registered dietitian, clinical and licensed nutritionist and nutrition detective. So if you haven't subscribed already, please, please subscribe and tell me below that you're a new subscriber. I'd love to welcome you to our YouTube family. Please like this video if you do. And there's a little bell somewhere around there. If you can just um, hit that bell and you will be um, apprised of new YouTube videos that come out. Also, I have a newsletter. I have a link below on how to get that. And please follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, you, YouTube. Yeah, this is YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. So a few years ago, I had a 29-year-old fisherman who was out on the water. My office is very close to lots of water, and he was out on the water every single day fishing. Yet he had some of the lowest vitamin D levels I have ever seen. So this is not just about sun exposure. There are reasons that we are deficient, even if we're getting out in the sun, which I do want you to do. I don't want you slathering sunscreen all over yourself all the time. I do want you out in the sun with some exposure to it, which is very, very healthy. But um, it's just got me researching. I'm like, okay, why is it that when people go out in the sun, they still are deficient? And I have come up with six things that I have found. Now, you know, you all know, if you don't know how important vitamin D is for depression and for weight control and for cancer prevention. I am going to link my vitamin D video below. Please, please watch that. So what should your levels be? Well, conventional lab levels are not accurate. If you're at a 30, you are at a suboptimal place. If you're at a 40, you're not at a good place. I really like my patients to be over 60. 50 is kind of on the borderline, but 60 is where I, I keep my levels up at 80, but you do need to talk to a healthcare practitioner. So they are just outdated. The number one vitamin D researcher in the entire world says that those levels are way too low, so don't go by those. But um, we need to figure out the root problem for any disease, anything or any deficiency that we have. We need to figure out the why, and I'm giving you the why today. I'm going to say this over and over again. We are not what we take in. We are what we absorb. Yes, I do believe in supplementation, but I, I also believe in getting rid of these root conditions so that your absorption is better. All of these conditions are related to absorption. I'm leaving the thing that I think is the most important and the thing that contributes the most to vitamin D deficiency to the end, but number one is obesity. Fat cells hold on to vitamin D. Statistically, people that are obese have lower levels of vitamin D. Number two is high cortisol. Now, what is cortisol? It's an adrenal hormone that is indicative of chronic stress, not the quick stress like adrenaline, but the chronic stress that we're under in our everyday modern lives. Vitamin D synthesis is dependent on cholesterol. And when we um, when we have a lot of stress, actually cortisol uses up all that cholesterol and the vitamin D has nothing to attach itself on and so we get lower absorption. There's nothing left to really, really make that vitamin D. Number three is an adequate fat consumption. I see this in all of my low fat patients, all of them, down the line, every single last person that if they have a low fat diet, they're gonna have lower vitamin D because if you don't have fat, you can't, it's a fat soluble vitamin, you can't synthesize, you can't make vitamin D. Number four are prescription drugs. Some lower the absorption and biologic activity of vitamin D and, the, and they're unfortunately the most prescribed drugs. Number one is steroids. Number two are protein, pro, proton pump inhibitors like a Nexium or a Prilosec. Uh, number three are antacids. Number four are anticoagulants and number five are blood thinners. All of those will make you more prone to vitamin D deficiency. Number five, something that you cannot help, and there's nothing you can do about it, but you can with all the other ones, is the aging process, aging. 
Listen, um, a lot of times when sunlight comes in, we, we do get a lot of vitamin D from the sun, and that's really where we should get it. But um, absorptive capacity goes down as we age, but also um, the capacity of the human skin and the epidermis and the dermis is lowered, and they can't produce vitamin D as we age, unfortunately. So we have to work on these other things. And number six is the thing that I think is the number one reason we do not absorb vitamin D well. It's epidemic in my practice. I see it over and over. And it is something that you can do something about, and that is poor gut health. That includes like leaky gut, which anybody with poor gut health has leaky gut, and, and, and like inflammation of the GI tract. And that is linked to thyroid disorders. I had leaky gut at one time because I have thyroid disease. And any really any kind of autoimmune diseases can be linked to leaky gut. Isn't that interesting? Also, digestive diseases like IBS and IBD and gallbladder disease, Crohn's disease, liver disease, any condition like this will impair your absorption because leaky gut impairs your absorption, not just of vitamin D, but of many, like 80% of your vitamins and minerals. You are not going to have the absorption. So I'm going to actually link my whole gut health series, the whole playlist. If you haven't seen that, it is so important. Please, please, please watch those videos because if you heal your gut, you are going to be less deficient in so many different vitamins and minerals and you are going to have a better quality of life. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video.